Hello there, Orla here and welcome to our training on content creation. This isn't just any content creation training, this is one where we have done for you prompts, ideas and ways of sharing your content when you're not quite sure exactly what to share. We've all been there, we've all been sat in front of our computer looking at our phone, knowing we need to share content, knowing that will help bridge the gap between us and our customers but we're not quite sure what to share and we hum and we haw and we get stuck. And basically in this training, that's not gonna happen anymore. Combined with this video training and your workbook, you'll always have something to refer back to to give you instant ideas on what you can share on your blog, in your newsletter, on social media and on LinkedIn. So it's gonna take care of absolutely everything for you. Before we dive straight in with the done for you prompts and the ideas of what you can share, I wanted to chat about who put content marketing on the throne. We all know that content marketing is essential and we all know that we need to be communicating and adding value to our customers via our content. But are we sure exactly why? Let's look at some of the many benefits of content marketing. So first of all, it's increased audience retention. Clients stay with you for longer when you are producing high quality content that they can engage with. It helps generate leads, the content that you share on your adverts, in your stories, on your newsletters, on your blogs, on your landing pages. All of this content helps you generate leads for your business. It helps build authority. People want to buy from the best in their industry. They want to buy from people who know what they're talking about, who are assertive and sure that they are, they are an authority in their industry and your content helps you do that. It helps you gain better social media traction by encouraging people to take action and have increased engagement. It improves conversions. So if people already know, like and trust you because of the content that you're providing on a consistent basis and they sign up for one of your webinars, or they go and they click on one of your product links, they're more likely to convert than somebody who has not seen your content and has not been following you online. It helps establish trust with your audience. So not only do they wanna buy from someone who knows what they're doing, but they also wanna buy from someone they trust, someone they genuinely, genuinely know has got their best interests at heart. And last of all, it helps enhance SEO and help you become findable online by sharing consistent content. But there's one big problem, my friends, and this problem is evident, and that is most content is shit. Yeah, I've said it. And I'm not ashamed to say that because what we find is people are embracing content marketing and they're maybe not experts in sharing content. Maybe they're not completely sure of who they are. Maybe sharing their story is quite new to them. And lots of times people share what we think we should share and not what our clients want to see coming from us. So we look at others in our industry and we try to emulate what they're sharing or we become a paled down version of ourselves because we're not quite sure that we're going to connect. And that's the big problem of content marketing is you're alienating your clients with content that was never really you in the first place. And this training is here to stop that. I'm so passionate about you becoming the best version of you in your business and you creating the content that's right for you and how you want to communicate with your customers. And there's a massive benefit to you in doing this. 81% of marketers found that they experienced increased traffic by investing as little as six hours per week in their social media content. Now, I'm not saying you have to spend six hours online. What I'm saying is that we can plan that out in advance by you learning to share your content and style and share it your way. And why should you share it your way? Well, first of all, we're all born complete individuals, but life tells us we cannot be ourselves. So we decide to fit in and create what we feel people want to see from us and never share the real us and what we stand for. And that's a common problem I notice with helping female business owners is that they're almost afraid to be themselves or they have to give themselves permission over time to be themselves in their business because life has always told us to be someone else. And life has always told us that we cannot be unique and we cannot be the real us, and that we cannot be perfectly imperfect, and we need to hold back. And the best guiding star for me 
in being myself in my business is my son, Alton. And you can see him here on this slide. Um, I've covered up the bottom half of that slide because Alton had no clothes on in the bottom half. But basically that was him dressed to go for a walk. And that's what I mean is that like, he is not ashamed of who he is. He knows himself inside out and he's happy to present that to the world. And granted, as his mother, I'm not going to let him walk down the street naked from the, the bottom half down, but I'm going to encourage him to be an individual and equally he encourages me to be an individual. So you have permission to be the real you in your business. You have permission to share what you want to share. If people don't get it, that's absolutely okay. They're not for you. But when you know your ideal client inside out and you're genuinely trying to solve a problem that they have, just be creative with your content and to, to share it the way you want to share it and to be unapologetically you. Um, good content connects with the clients and encourages action. So take your time to develop your content style and continue to expand on this. And the best way to do this is to say, is that post really me? Or am I sharing this in a way that is really me? Am I being open and honest about who I am, what my business stands for, how I want to help my ideal clients? Or am I sharing what I think I should share? You don't want to be vanilla, but you also don't want to be completely out there. So people like people who are really honest and completely themselves. And that's what I want you to grant yourself permission to do that, just to tell yourself that's absolutely okay. And we're going to dive straight into ways that you can do this and some content ideas. Now, all of this is contained in the workbook. So I'd like you to pick out your workbooks. And when I'm going through these, I want you to highlight ones that work for you. If they don't work for you, you fucking ignore them. And if they do work for you, let's explore them in greater detail. You can change anything that you want or you can dive in deeper. It's entirely up to you. There's no, there's no must-dos when it comes to this training. What's essential is that you think, okay, I'm comfortable sharing that. That's the real me. And you crack on. If it's not for you, park it and move on. So some content ideas are, what you really want people to understand about your business or passion is. And that's a way where you can talk about who you are, your history, what's inspiring you, what makes you different, and really help people understand it. It's a way for you to birth some myths that might be in your industry as well. And remember, you can write out this content idea, and then you can decide to share it as an email, to share it as a newsletter, to share it as a Facebook Live, so you can reuse this content as well. Um, how has what you do believe in changed your own life? So, you know, when we did our initial content training and we spoke about, you know, always tell your story. This is a fantastic way of just telling your story. How has what you do believe in changed the life of your clients? Again, some testimonials, client stories, case studies. What is happening in your industry that infuriates you? Now, this is a chance for you to call out the bullshit. This is a chance for you to say, this is happening. No. We cannot continue with this. And you can actually shine a light on something that your clients may or may not be aware of, but in a positive way. Um, what is happening in your industry that you love? Give a shout out for you know the progress that you're making and how amazing you are. What are the core values that you stand for as an entrepreneur? It could be as an entrepreneur, it could be as a chef, as a stylist, um, as a beautician, you know, it could be, what do you stand for? How would you explain what you do to a five-year-old? Now, I have seen this done a lot on social media, and I wouldn't say, this is how I would explain it to a five-year-old. You know, you could say something like, my niece asked me, you know, what is it that I do? Or my son asked me, why am I able to take him to the park every day when some mums aren't? You know, and that way you can talk about your passion, why you love it, how you're up till midnight every night, but it's worth it because you get to take him to the park. Um, without jargon, how do you manage to do your thing whilst raising kids, working two jobs, being a fantastic partner, traveling the world, whatever it is that is relevant to your clients and they would be doing the same and offer some inspiration. What would you teach your kids about what you do? How has what you do made you a better business owner, made you a better person, made you a better partner, made you a better mom? 
how your business can instantly increase someone's health, happiness, bank balance, enjoyment, well-being. That's a really simple one to talk about the results that your product or service generate and how you change their lives. How to do what you do without hiring someone to do it. A story from the early days of your business, learning your craft, doing your thing, um, your first experience of working with a client or customer. Oh, sorry, those two are combined in one. What did you learn? Do you do things differently now? Why or why not? So talk about your early days in business and what you've learned. What gives you your product or service the X factor? What makes you different? You know, you could tie that type of post in with, you know, X Factor coming back on the television, you know, British, um, Britain's Got Talent coming back on the television, The Greatest Dancer, and you can talk about, you know, what makes your product or service different and tie it in with something relevant that's going on right now. The tricks and tools you use to make your work more effective. You know, what are your hidden gems? What do you want to share with people? So do you see where I'm going with this? That there's so many content ideas in this workbook and every one you can share in about four or five different ways. What I really want you to get from this workbook is to go, wow, like I can share my vision in different ways. I can share my business in different ways. I don't have to be vanilla. I don't have to be someone else. I can genuinely be me in my business and share what I love. Um, What are your clients saying right now about working with you? Gather some testimonials and take screenshots. What results are your clients creating? Again, are there any expected, unexpected benefits, positive side effects? There are no, there are, there are never too many ways that you can share testimonials, client journeys, what they're learning, what they're growing. So consistently make that a part of your content. What's the biggest breakthrough you see in your clients time and time and time and time again? <clears throat> and this is, you can talk about, you know, feedback that you get from your clients when they buy your product. You know, they're surprised by the flavors. They're surprised by the quality of the product. They're surprised by the quick delivery. They're surprised by the packaging that it comes in. You know, from your services, it could be some end results. You know, how they completely change as a person. They become more comfortable in themselves. They lose weight. They, they, they sit back because their finances are taken care of. You know, there's always loads of ways that you can share the client benefits and what they're experiencing. What do people need to do on a daily basis to get results with your work? So if you sell a product, you know, how can you encourage people to use your product on a consistent basis? How can you encourage people to, you know, consistently use your cream? your makeup, your cups, your dishware, you know, whatever it is, use content, encourage people to use it, encourage people to enjoy it, encourage people to get the maximum benefits from it. If it's a service, accountability is key. So write some accountability posts, you know, um, here's what happened when somebody invested in my service, you know, and here's what they thought they needed to do and here's what they actually needed to do. You know, tell people what they need to do when they buy your product or invest in your service. Um, what are your clients talking about right now? What's going on in their world? How can you enter the conversation and take a stand, lead the way? Now, this is so relevant, especially with the year we've had so far in 2020, where at the beginning of the lockdown, we saw memes coming in that were super relevant. They were talking about no toilet paper on the shelves. They were talking about not being able to get out, been in lockdown, overeating, cooking banana bread. So people took posts and they made them super, 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 super relevant. But then 6, 12, 14 weeks later, those types of posts weren't as relevant. And it was more posts about getting out, getting back into exercise, getting fit and healthy again, returning to normal life. So when you know your content concepts and you know those four things that your client needs to understand about you before they do business with you, and you break them down into more content, you can always then make that content really relevant. So for example, if I was a fitness instructor and one of my content concepts was that you had to be, you had to live your life, you know, you had to create a fitness regime that <clears throat> respected how you live your life and that you are an individual and you enjoy to be happy and live the life the way that you want it. Well, then around about Christmas, you could talk about taking a break from exercise or exercising to step away from the family or exercising instead of going to the Christmas shops. 
in January, you could talk about, you know, setting goals for the new year, what you want to achieve. During the summer, you could talk about, you know, are you going on holiday? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? And then take other relevant things. Is there a TV show on that's really popular, like Love Island? You know, is there, um, is there like a documentary? Is there a book out? That's how you make your content relevant. So you have your core concept that you know and understand and are genuinely passionate about. And then you just adjust that depending on what's already in your client's mind, what they're already talking about. And that's really key because when it's done right, it's fantastic. But when people are like six, eight weeks behind the curve, it just looks a bit tired. So always have content there that you can become super, super relevant um, with. If you had to start all over again, what would you do differently in terms of your thing, in terms of your business, in terms of what you do? Um, what would you do differently in terms of if you were a coach and how you transformed your life? What would you do differently if you were an accountant in terms of getting your head around the finances in your own business? What would you do differently if you were on a weight loss journey in terms of the weight loss product that you sell and the commitment that was required in losing the weight? Um, describe a time a client has not gotten results from working with you or buying your product or not been happy and be refreshingly honest. Um, so lots of people become afraid of this one and they're like, no, I can't do this one. Like it's, it's not happening. I, I definitely, definitely can't do this. But actually it's really key because we all work with clients that maybe weren't the right fit for us. And it's better to highlight those people so that it's okay for them not to come to you. Then you feel like they have to, or it's better to highlight a time where maybe you got it wrong. So, you know, you could talk about a time a client wasn't happy with your product. We see loads of people do that and turn it into really fun things like, you know, voted worst coffee shop by some guy on, um, what's that, what's that website called? Some guy on TripAdvisor voted us the worst coffee shop. And you saw then people piss themselves laughing at that and they got more engagement. Talk about when somebody wasn't happy with your product and talk about why it's not for everyone. You know, our product is bespoke. It's made with this customer in mind. It's made with this results in mind. So sometimes you're not going to enjoy it and that's absolutely okay. And then you could maybe talk about your refund policy. You could maybe talk about, you know, what to expect and who the right customer is. When it comes to services, I think you need to talk about when they're ready to buy from you and when they're not. Because people might come and invest in your services thinking that's all they need to do. And then maybe they're not happy. And then maybe you're not a right fit for them. And you can talk about, you know, this person came, they weren't happy. And the truth is they weren't ready to make change. And I should have said something sooner, you know, and, and I was wrong not to. And I've acknowledged that. And that's why I only take on clients who are 100% committed to make the change and ready to do this. Um, what are your comp competitors saying that you wholeheartedly disagree with? Another one to stand out from the crowd. And what does a day in your life look like? These ones are super, super important because what you can do is talk about your life and give people a glimpse behind the scenes. And it's great for Instagram stories. It's great for some Facebook posts. And we all know these are the ones that people tend to like that bit quicker as well. So there you go. Now, there's actually even more ideas in your workbook. There's way more ideas in your workbook. I just wanted to go, a few, go through a few of them. So your job is to go to them to think, okay, which ones do I like? Which ones do I not like? Underline, you know, delete, and just go with it and start creating content that's unapologetically you and just refer back to it anytime you're not sure what to say. And then again, one example could be a newsletter, a blog post, a Facebook post, a Facebook Live, an Instagram post, an IGTV, a story. You know, these ideas are totally versatile. What matters is that you do it and that you share it consistently. Now, my friends, you know I'm super, super, super passionate about emails and getting your emails opened. You know that I care about you sending out emails consistently because really, 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 that is the only platform that we own. Like, you hear lots of rumors about email is dead and, you know, people don't do email marketing anymore. And that's absolute bullshit. I ask you, do you have an email account? Do you check it regularly? If the answer is yes, then consider that your customers would do the same. If the answer is no, well, that's okay too. Ask your customers, do they do the same? Now, I am not saying the customers don't get frustrated by email. I am not saying that people don't become inundated by email. What I'm saying is 
if you are being unapologetically you, you're adding some amazing freaking content and you genuinely care about your customers, well then your emails are a fantastic way of you communicating with them and your emails should stand out in their inbox. So again, I'm going to go through a few of these, not all, because they're all in your workbook, but here are some examples of some email titles that you can have. You know, ways that people can go, oh, okay, I need to see this email they've enticed me. And it's not, it's kind of like clickbait, but it's a genuine, honest, caring clickbait. That's what we'll call it. We'll call it caring clickbait. So the first thing you could do in your email titles is you could have some truth bombs. The one big mistake that even smart experience <clears throat> make. So if I sold spice kits, I could go the one big mistake that even experienced chefs make. And you could give them a little tip on how to roast the spices, you know, how to pick the perfect spices, and um, how to create the kits, how to maintain freshness. There's so much that you could do with that. Um, the real truth about do do do. Um, the real truth about um, sustainable fashion. The real truth about fast fashion. The real truth about um, cheap products online. So much there. Mm -hmm. Another thing is how to use the ancient secrets of X to Y. So you could say how to use the ancient secrets of um, intermittent fasting to lose weight. Can you tell I'm going off the cuff here? Can you tell I haven't planned out what I was going to say in this? I am looking to try and generate ideas quickly to show you that you can get to this place. You know, how to use the ancient secrets of intermittent fasting to use weight, lose weight. How can you, how you can use the ancient secrets of yoga to maintain a healthy body, you know? Um, why the so-called gurus, experts are wrong when they say that women should multitask, that men can't multitask, that you need to work 40 hours a week in order to um, build a successful business. You could move on then to secrets and tactics. How a simple tweak with your mm can result in. So how a simple tweak with your wardrobe can result in you feeling the best you've ever felt. The one big secret of. Mm -hmm. How to spot misleading, inaccurate, and then fill in the blanks. So how to spot misleading, inaccurate. How to spot misleading, um, guidance you know how to spot misleading guidance from personal development experts mm -hmm. why following the fashionable but stupid advice about lighting will mean you look horrendous in your professional photos and um, shocking confessions shocking confessions of a personal development addict that would be me and um, embarrassing confessions of let's see embarrassing confessions of a diet holic you know, of a yo-yo dieter. The real reason why we must protect the environment today. So you see where I'm going with this? You look at these and you say, okay, how can I pull in? And you can go back to your, you can go back to your earlier, what we've just covered in terms of the content ideas and think, okay, this is my content idea. Now I need to pick a headline because these can be used for your headlines on Facebook as well. Or an email header for this and just pair them across. We have got so many examples in your workbook. I'm so chuffed with it. Real world examples of how to make yourself bulletproof, foolproof, recession proof, recession proof, how to make yourself feel amazing, um, how to quickly smash it with line dancing, how to quickly smash it with our five step formula for success. You know, the wildly effective strategy um, to create the business and life of your dreams that the gurus don't want you to know. And the wildly effective strategy, my friends, is consistency. And um, the often ignored foundation um, that makes everything else work like magic. So the often ignored foundation of creating a healthy and happy home that makes everything else work like magic. So you see, we've got so many examples. So I'm not going to go through them all right now because in your workbook, there are loads. But what I want you to do is I want you to commit to the process of finding content that you want to share your way, your way and only your way, and then getting some really cool clickbait, careful, caring clickbait, email headers that we can share. Now, it wouldn't be content unless we had some really, really cool testimonials. 
we desperately need to make sure you are consistently sharing testimonials as part of your content marketing strategy. And why do you need to do that? Well, it's selling without selling. It's an unbiased voice that establishes trust and says this business is worth investing in. And you cannot ask for much more than that. It's that peer to peer. So rather than me as a business owner saying, buy from me, I'm amazing. And that's going to be met with some resistance, quite naturally. Buying resistance, quite naturally. But what if somebody just like them, that they know, that, you know, they look at their profile and they think, okay, that person's just like me. If that person says, I felt like you, I was equally as confused. I was equally as not sure. And now I'm delighted that I bought from this person. I bought their product. I invested in their service, etc. Um, so simple. I have a four step formula when it comes to creating testimonials. Again, you need to play around with these questions and work out the questions that work best for you. This is just an example. So the first question, what hesitation did you have about buying my product, investing in my service? Now, you're always going to have challenges that you need to overcome when it comes to selling your product or service. Because what happens is your customers go into self-defense mode and they try and protect themselves and they try and protect their wallets. They try and protect their status quo. So when you can, first of all, determine what these hesitations are, you can overcome them in your marketing and overcome them in a genuine way. And a simple way to that is through testimonials. So if Mary bought your product and she said, well, I was a bit worried about the cost, or I was a bit worried about the investment of time, or I was a bit worried about the delivery time wait, or I was a bit worried about the materials used, you know? And if they say, but actually, after buying the product, um, I realized that's not a problem. But actually, after investing in the service, I realized that's not a problem, you know? So rather than you saying these are the hesitations, it's like your testimonials have read their mind, and it's like your testimonials have gone, aha, we've got this. The next thing that I want you to ask is what was the best thing about using my product or experience in my service? Now, we look for peak moments here. We look for moments that we can capitalize on. And are there any common threads? The best thing, what was the high point? Clients are most likely to remember the high points and the low points, okay? So when we remember the high points, we can capitalize on those and make sure that they have the best possible experience. So always, always ask that question. You can come down and say, what would you say to someone now who has similar hesitations about buying my products or investing in my service? So rather than you overcoming the hesitations that your clients, potential clients will have through your sales copy, you can also get your testimonials to do that, you know? And we see that so often in really good advertisements. We see people go, oh, if I could say anything to anyone out there watching this program, it's don't delay. You know, book that holiday today. You know, do not delay. Invest in this pension today. Do not delay. Buy this weight loss program today. How many times do we see that? And we know how super special it is because it's somebody speaking to their earlier version of themselves through the testimonial that gets people super excited. Would you recommend me to a friend? Why or why not? And be open and honest here. If the answer is no, you want to find out why not and remedy that. Um, why they would recommend you. I'd recommend you to a friend because you saved my life. I'd recommend you to a friend because my child loves this product because it was amazing. And then when they say yes, ask them to recommend you to a friend. Now, when it comes to recommendations, remember people will naturally recommend anyway so if you're asking them to recommend and they don't know that they probably have behind the scenes, they've maybe just not told you about that. Now let's look at some ways to share your testimonials. We want to see these absolutely everywhere. First of all, on your website. Now, when we say website, lots of people have a dedicated testimonial page. Fantastic. But in addition to that, I would also recommend that you splatter. <laughs> Is there a better word than splatter? We'll go with splatter. That you splatter your testimonials across your website. So anytime you have like a client objection that would normally come in that you're talking about in your copy, um, you could have a testimonial underneath it. So let's say you're talking about the price or the investment in what you do. You could say the investment is X 
thousand pounds and then underneath you could have a testimonial from Mary that says initially I was a bit concerned about the financial investment because I could I didn't think I could afford it at the time now I have saved this money 10 times over and it was the best investment I ever made so splatter those testimonials wherever relevant across your website and make sure that they they blend into the copy and that they're an easy read you can also put your testimonials on sales pages those landing pages when you are trying to you know sell your opt-in send your offer all over social media consistently share them on social media and in sharing them on social media make your client the hero of your testimonials you could do some videos blogs newsletters case studies and some more social media posts so one testimonial is not going to be shared in one way one testimonial is going to be shared in all of these ways so people can see it consistently we're almost at the end and you'll recognize a lot of this from our initial content training and we're just going to take it one step further and we're going to create your content plan so step one is that you create your concept wheel what four things does my client need to know about me to know that I'm the right person to do business with now in creating your client concept wheel you always refer back to those four things or those four topics that are going to make up your content marketing and the second thing is that you know the purpose of your content and I know what you're thinking I am sharing content to sell what's on offer I am sharing content to generate sales we know it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that you just put up a social media post to brand new followers and they go, aha, I'm going to buy from her. Even in Facebook adverts, there's a step-by-step -step journey, you know? So is your content to build relationships, you know, to get you out there with your new followers, to get you out there with your new email subscribers and to kind of go, hey, I'm here. This is what I do. This is how I genuinely care. This is how I'm an expert. This is how the competition have fucked you over. This is how brilliant I am. And just build some relationships in a genuine way. You could also use your content to build authority. You know, I am the expert at this. I spent 10 years studying this at culinary school. You know, I immersed myself in this topic. I have been through this situation. I have been through this heartache. I am an authority. So you can change your content to build authority. Maybe you're going to use your content to generate engagement. We talk about this so much. Memes, fantastic for generating engagement. Live videos, asking people to comment, asking people to comment if they're catching on replay. You know, you can use it to generate engagement by asking people to like, share or share content that they'll naturally do that for. And one part of the purpose of your content could be to generate sales and to encourage people to take action. So, the first thing that you're going to do in creating your plan is to know your concepts. The second thing is to know the purpose, you know, why are you sharing this content on this particular day? And the third thing is to share your content your way. Now, we have been through so much in this training that allows you to get creative and add your style to the content you are sharing, that allows you to be you, that allows you to speak to your client the way only you would and to make sure you use your language. So again, when you're going through your worksheet, if you don't like a language or a phrase that I have used, you fucking change that to something you would use. And lastly, you're going to adjust your content for each platform. So you're going to repurpose content. And that basically means that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to constantly think of new content every single motherfucking day. You save time and money by refining your marketing strategy to include all content on a variety of different marketing channels. So what that basically means is, if you write a blog post, you also turn it into a Facebook post, you also turn it into an Instagram post, you also turn it into a LinkedIn post, um, a Facebook Live, a motivational quote, you know, whatever the case may be, but you reuse that content so that, A, people learn through repetition, or your clients are influenced through repetition and you repeating a shit hot message across all platforms and B, you don't become fucking knackered thinking up new content. So there we have it. I hope you're as passionate as I am about this. I hope you're as excited about as I am. But guys, head over to your worksheet and create your content marketing plan 
and stand out from the crowd by being the only person your clients really care about past themselves when it comes to this, and that is you. Thank you so much for listening, and I am so excited to see you in our next training. Bye for now. Orla.